G'day guys, welcome back to another Salt and Carbon episode. In case you've missed last week's episode, here is a very short recap of what happened. In this week's episode we'll be heading upon a sailboat, we'll be going to the famous Red Bluff and going to Nalu Station. Enjoy the episode! Those that know me know that I sailed competitively in Melbourne for a year and here I get humbled by a crew member for telling her that she's cheating to, while using an electric winch to hoist the main. Well needless to say, I learned this day to keep my mouth shut. Let's see if I can hoist this sail just by using my own manpower. <laughs> He's doing all right. He's doing all Jen and I have left the Cape Perrin area or the Denham area uh, and we're on our way to Carnarvon and we've just decided to stop over uh, at a lookout point which was Eagle Bluff and now about 50 kilometers away from Denham there's a place called Shell Beach which is where we are now and it's so strange I'll show you look at all of this just all little shells that flourish in this area. The salinity of the ocean here is about twice that of the open ocean which is quite strange and it means that this type of shell or this type of animal um, flourishes in this area hence why all of the deposits of the shells. Very strange. Yeah, and uh, Jen and I are also very happy to be leaving the Denham area because we've spent about a week up in Denham and Cape Perrin and Monkey Mire and all of those places. But as you can see, the weather today is pretty, pretty crappy. So we're happy to turn our crappy day into a travel day um, because it's another 300 kilometers to Carnarvon from here. Look at that. These are the quabba blowholes. We got here at a good time because it seems like they're really puffing away. So we're here um, at the aquarium beach. It's a sort of a marine sanctuary, supposed to be a really nice snorkeling area just next to quabba blowholes. And we tried to go and have a snorkel now as you can see from the line on my head i've been wearing my mask but the current is so strong it looks like it's pretty chilled from the outside but you get in and you can't even even with the fins that we bought you can't even swim straight like the water and the current's just pushing you back so we only lasted about 10 or 15 minutes and we've jumped out now and just airing down the tires and then we'll probably be heading towards Cobba Station and Red Bluff campsite for tonight. So this is the aquarium beach over here. 
like I said, it doesn't look too bad from the outside. It is a bit windy, but when you get into that water, the current is something else. To be honest, a lot of the coral is quite damaged too, which is quite sad. Um, so not as good as what I thought it would be. Hey guys, so I feel pretty bad for not speaking to you guys in a while. <laughs> I think the last time I spoke to you guys, we were still in Denham. And right now we're in a place called The Bluff. And it's a famous like surfing spot. So if you can look out there, pretty cool. Um, but we're also gonna try to catch some fish because I haven't caught fish in a while. So I um, feel like I need to go catch some, catch something. Also, there's not really much else to do if you're, if you're not out catching fish, um, other than relaxing, that is. But there's a troopy, all set up, beautiful view. The solar is absolutely pumping at the moment. I'm getting like seven amps into, into the battery, which is sweet. It was at this point that we realized that there is something seriously wrong with our GoPro. Little did we know that in the later episodes, we actually had to replace our GoPro. Um, but yeah, sorry for not filming the fishing mission of the day. Uh, we managed to get it working again for this episode, as well as some episodes in the future. But inevitably, we had to replace the GoPro. Here's our setup also. Look at these massive rocks <laughs> that we've had to drive onto to try and level out the floor <laughs> so the troop can be not too tilted hello <laughs> hello how's it going <laughs> we just got you back from a nice uh, fish see that sunset means uh good time for it <laughs> spear o'clock i am thirsty my throat is dry dry ne? We've got our friends camping next to us here. Hello. Hugh and Desi. That's Desi. <laughs> Not the worst spot to be. All right, guys. So, um, Jane just showed you the sunset. <clears throat> it's that time of the evening. Unfortunately, we were unsuccessful with our fishing mission um, in terms of catching a very big fish and having dinner for tonight we caught a lot of little bait fish and i used that bait fish and absolutely sent it out had four big hookups and then there goes a hook gone or it gets snagged or something along those lines so i'm a bit irritated about that but you can't really be irritated for a very long time when you've got a sunset like that so yeah it's uh it was still a good day overall the flies here are pretty bad but yeah it's uh, it's good to be here we've already met a lot of people made a lot of friends uh, which is good
All right, guys, so it's the last day at Red Bluff and we've decided to go for a bit of a walk. I'll show you that on these cliffs. And uh, obviously me being me, I want to take my fishing rod with. So one last ditch attempt to see if Red Bluff can provide some, some dinner for us. Uh, but if not, at least it's a pretty view. We've really enjoyed this place so far. Kind of looks like we're back at the pinnacles again. All these rocks. No luck on the fishing front this morning. No, unfortunately not. You can see them all there. They're swimming right next to the lure, but they won't take it. Not a chance. And it's a bit of a challenge using the lures, trying to use the lures. Yeah. So no bait. We've got bait, but uh, yeah, it's time for us to head to Nalu. Right, you guys if you can't tell it's very windy but this little building is called the Hilton supposedly after the Hilton Hotel I reckon it's got more luxury than the Hilton Hotel to be honest she be raining <laughs> There's nothing like a bit of rain to bring every man to his knees. When you're camping, yeah. To uh, to hit in tent pegs, that is. <laughs> and I'm busy making guy ropes out of paracord, just for every little flap. <laughs> Last night we had a terrible night's sleep. Absolutely terrible. Kept on worrying about the, the awning being out and uh, the canvas flapping. Yeah, the wind was howling. And then one thing that everyone needs to think about with a rooftop tent or with at least a rooftop conversion, the one that we have, all the zips keep on ting ting tinging against one <laughs> another. So needless to say at about quarter to four this morning we got up in the middle of the night. It was mostly Vanna but I was came out at the end for moral support <laughs> and to have a wee. <laughs> but um, he had to just rearrange the um, the guy ropes and put an extra one out to make sure that the wind wasn't blowing and flapping the awning so much and or making any any water pool on the you know between the arms of the of the awning sometimes water can pool in there and then yeah you, you can stretch the canvas or even worse you can break the arms off because the water is yeah. too heavy and then first thing this morning when we got up we just packed the awning away um, it was still really windy at that stage and then moved the troopie so that we were facing into the wind because the wind direction changed overnight yeah so yeah now it seems to wind seems to be dying down a little bit but i don't want to jinx it <laughs> you just did oh damn <laughs> all right i don't know if you guys can hear this but this is supposed to be a really good surfing area and this area here is a lagoon so a natural swimming spot one of the best snorkeling areas along this coastline and you can see wabigongs and all of that sort of stuff here uh, but yeah we've come here on the two days that the weather was absolutely crappy so we were supposed to be snorkeling this morning but that's not going to happen obviously morning everyone so as you can tell today is a beautiful day so we're going to be going having coffee first and then going snorkeling um yeah we didn't have a breath of wind last night and no rain either so yeah i think this is what everyone talks about when they say come to nalu there this place is pretty nice when when the weather turns it on 
So unfortunately, Jen and I won't be snorkeling today. Uh, just walked down to the lagoon and the water is extremely milky. So yeah, we won't be able to see a wabigong even if it swam straight into my face, pretty much. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, we've come to Nalu, met some good people and so on, but didn't really have a very good snorkeling experience. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked the video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It really helps me with my motivation. And uh, stick around for next week's episode. We'll be meeting up with friends I went to university with in the Coral Bay region.